Hey everyone, thanks so much for checking out my channel. My name is Erin Weimert and I am here today with Lower Back Love Part 1. So there's going to be a part two, you'll have to stay tuned. But today we're going to work on opening all angles of the hips so that we can access the lower back and we're going to work with longer holds. So in terms of being physical, this class is not going to exactly get your heart rate up if that's what you're looking for, but this is going to create a lot of ease um, of tension around your lower back, which means again, opening up the hips. So we're going to use a couple blocks today. If you have those handy, they're totally optional though. I'm going to use them. And if you do have a bolster or a couple pillows nearby, you might have those handy as well. If you enjoy my classes and would like to subscribe to my channel, uh, please do stay updated on upcoming content. And if you enjoy and would like to leave a donation, my information is in the movie notes. So we're going to go ahead and get started off on our back today. So it's going to be a slow ease into the practice. This is going to be a really chill class. There'll be a little bit of vinyasa, but as I mentioned, longer holds. So if you are low on energy, if you're sore, if you're just getting back into your practice, this is the perfect class for you. And let's start in a constructive rest. So we'll have our feet on the outer edges of the mat. Let your knees drop into center. Open your arms wide to a T. And you can have your eyes open or closed. If it feels like you're having a hard time settling down, I would encourage you to close the eyes. And see if you can begin to find an equal length through your breath. So maybe four counts in and four counts out. You can do more or less. And just setting the tone for our nervous system to begin to unwind. This is going to be a really nice class to enjoy some stillness in, to enjoy subtle, gentle movement. And then see if you can start to lengthen the exhale. You might do four counts in, five counts out, or you could do six counts out. And feel that with every exhalation, tension releases from the shoulders, the arms, the face. Let's take just a couple more rounds of breath. Let's do three more. Setting the tone to not rush this practice. And find your next exhale and just breathe normally, breathe naturally. Let's allow yourself to feel settled here. Settled in this moment, settled in your body, settled with your breath. And take a breath in, fill the lungs, a slow inhale. And as you exhale, allow your knees to fall towards the left. So it's an open hip twist. Now you very well might just stay here. If you like, you can pick up your left foot and place it on top of your right thigh. I like to flex the left foot so it becomes a weight. And if this bothers your right knee at all, you're welcome to flex the right foot too. Just a few breaths here. Feeling that release through the outer right hip, lower right side body. Let's take a breath in. As you exhale, tone the belly to release. Place your left foot wide and let your knees drop towards the right. Again, you can stay here, or you can place your right foot on top of the left thigh. You should feel a little something through the whole outside of your left thigh. Left 
left hip, maybe into the lower left side body. And we'll keep the legs as they are. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, just bring your left knee upright, left foot plants flat. Let's take one more breath in. And as you exhale, drop your figure four prep towards the left. And you can reach down with your left hand and grab the right ankle and pull it a little closer. And see if you can relax your bottom left thigh so it's not lifting up. Let it be heavy. And see if you can relax your outer right hip as well. Instead of hugging it in, let it release away from the midline. This is one of my favorite stretches to release the low back. Let's take a breath in. And as you exhale, tone the belly to untwist, center off your pelvis and place your right foot flat. And as you inhale, bring your left ankle on top of the right thigh. You can bump your hips to the left. And as you exhale, drop everything towards the right. So left foot plants flat. And if you did on the first side, reach your right hand down. See if you can pull your left foot a little bit closer. And then relax your top left hip. Let it just release away from you. That should increase the sensation. And let the bottom right thigh get heavy. Just breathe into the sensation you feel in outer left hip, lower left side body. Let's take another inhale. And as you exhale, tone the belly to untwist, center off your pelvis, and then bring your knees in towards your shoulders and find just a gentle rock side to side. And see if you can hang on each side for a little bit, just putting a little bit of weight on the ass side joint. Right where your spine meets the pelvis. Let's take another breath in, find your center. And as you exhale, drop both knees towards the left. And you don't have to stack the hips. You can let the right hip fall back a little bit. And just let the right upper arm bone become heavy. Let's take another inhale. And as you exhale, tone the belly to release and bring your knees towards the right. Let's take a breath in. Now as you exhale, start to roll towards your right and we'll press up to a seated position. Now, if when you sit upright, you feel like you're rolling backwards or falling backwards, see if you can bring something under your hip. So it might be a blanket, it might be a pillow, just something to get you off the ground so that your hips are above the knees. That's gonna definitely help. Place the palms on the knees. And then think about leading with your rib cage. Pop your rib cage over towards the right and then back behind you, round the spine a little bit, over towards the left and then forward. And then once you get the hang of that, see if you can start to find a bigger and bigger movement, not faster. In fact, when you go bigger, you'll probably want to go slower. Every time you move the ribs back, feel that little tuck in your tail to lengthen the low spine. And you might start to get your elbows into it. You can let your head go, get your shoulders into it. 
Again, don't move too quickly. You want to feel all around the pelvis, all angles of the pelvis. It's creating this circular motion. Go as slow as you want or need. I really like the part where I hinge forward and lengthen the low back and roll back and tuck the tail. And then gradually we'll start to find a smaller movement. And smaller and smaller until you find your center. As you inhale, expand your arms out wide. As you exhale, bring your left hand towards the right knee. Let's find a gentle twist. Now, I personally don't teach squaring the hips in a twist. I think when we let the pelvis and the spine move together, there's way more freedom for your sacrum and your SI joints. So if you wanted, you could allow your right hip to even move back a little bit. And just feel that the inhales are an invitation to lengthen, to create space. Exhales, an invitation to drop more fully into the twist. And that doesn't necessarily mean go deeper. It could just be being more present. If you feel any cramping in the spine, just know that that's feedback from your spine that you've gone too far. Again, this is all about being gentle with ourselves. And from here, stretch the right arm up towards the sky. We'll keep the left hand where it is. And we're going to move really, really slowly, reaching the top arm up and over. It's like a diagonal stretch. Just enjoying creating space really slowly through your lower right side body. Mm. You can pause for a minute before you go deeper. You may pulse into it. Find your next exhale and slowly inhale up. Ooh, that was nice. And as you exhale, we'll fold directly over the right knee and let the head come down. Imagine there were an imaginary sandbag right uh, at your left hip crease, weighting the left hip down. And if you need support in front of you, you can always have your hands on props, blocks, or a bolster. You might even be up here, and that's okay. And let's slowly make our way through to center. And as you inhale, start to walk your hands back in. Mm. And we got a side too. So let's switch out the crossing of your legs. And then moving with our rib circles, we'll bump our ribs towards the left, back behind us, towards the right, and forward. You might even work with the breath, inhaling forward, exhaling back. Again, I find the slower, the better. And then you can start to increase your range of motion. And you can start to get the elbows, the shoulders into it. Maybe you allow the head to find some freedom. Again, you're not like head banging. You're just letting the head move with the spine. Feel the low back lengthen as you reach forward. Feel it lengthen as you tuck on the way back. And then we'll start to find 
a smaller and smaller movement. Let it be really, really gradual. Until eventually you find center. And as you inhale, expand your arms out wide to a T. And as you exhale, bring your right hand towards your left knee. Again, you can allow your left hip to move back. And a lot of times forcing the hips to stay square while the rest of the spine twists can cause compression in the lower back. So if you actually let the pelvis and the spine move together, then there's lots of freedom there. Again, as you inhale, feel extension and length through the front and the back of the spine. And as you exhale, you can just intend to let the ribs spin around towards the left. And as you inhale, stretch your left arm towards the sky. And then just real slow, we'll go on the diagonal up and over towards the right. And just take your time. You want to enjoy this release. It feels good to release tension from the low back versus, say, other parts of the body, which can feel way intense. I often find shoulder opening to be really tough and intense. Find your next exhale and then tone your belly, inhale up. And as you exhale, fold over your left knee. Notice if the right hip lifts up, you don't have to force it down, but feel it's intending to be weighted towards the earth. And if you're up here, if you're on props, that's okay. And start to walk your palms forward. And just fold. See the back of the pelvis rolling behind you. And then we'll start to roll over the shins, make your way into a tabletop position. And here we are. Just slowly making your way off the ground. Spread the fingers wide. Find the knees under the hips. Take a big breath in, length in front of the body, long and wide. And as you exhale, starting from the tail, feel a little tuck. Draw the navel in, draw the heart in, draw the chin in. Again, full big breath to lengthen. And exhale. Press through the palms, press through the shins. Let's find about three more like that, and there's no rush to get through them. Use the breath to find your fullest expression of the shape. Come back to a long spine, take a breath in. And as you exhale, just thread your right arm underneath the left. Weight comes on to the right ear and the right shoulder. And then stretch your left palm forward like it's in a down dog. And use your palm, your left palm, to allow the hips to move back. Just let your hips go, let them sway in whatever direction they go naturally. And you might feel something through the outer right side of your spine. And 
As you inhale, slide your left palm to eye line and exhale your right palm to tabletop. Let's find one cow pose, inhale, and exhale to cat, tuck and round. Come back to a long spine, take a breath in. And as you exhale, thread your left arm underneath the right. Stretch the right palm forward like it's in a down dog. And just let yourself sink into the left shoulder. Let your hips sway in whatever direction they go. You might find something through the outside of left side of the spine. Feeling that nice release through the erector muscles. As you inhale, slide your right palm to eye line. Exhale your left palm to table. Let's inhale to cow pose. And as you exhale, tuck and round. Let's do one more time, cow pose, tuck the toes. And as you exhale, lift your knees up, come into a short down dog. And then step your feet out wide to the outer edges of the mat. And then press your hips up and back. So with this short down dog, you might get your heels towards the ground. This might even be shorter than what mine looks like. Now as you press your palms down and forward, see if you can let your hips bump over towards the left without lifting the right heel up or any part of the foot for that matter. See if you can get the pinky toe mound to root. And then bring your hips up and over to the right. Nice release to the calf, IT band. One more time over towards the left. Let's marinate in that. And up and over towards the right. See if you can straighten the feet out. Notice if you're kind of pigeon-toed or maybe you're turned out with the toes. Let's come back to center and start to walk towards the top of your space. Bring your feet hip width, or they could even be wider. The tighter your low back, the wider I think feels good for the feet to uh, find width between them. And then you can weave your fingertips in between the elbow creases. And the more you bend your knees here, the more release you'll get for your low back. And just feel free to sway a little side to side. It's moving in a way that's releasing tension from your spine. Again, you can bob around. It's letting gravity do the work. And let that go. Keep a bend through the knees as you roll up slow, slow to stand. Get no rush to get there. Let's roll the shoulders out of the ears and release your palms by your side, open them wide. Let's find a couple half salutations. Big breath in, reach all the way up. Exhale, hands settle in front of the chest. Let's do it again, full breath in, reach back even further. And exhale, hands to the center of the chest. Once more like that, inhale. As you exhale, hands through the heart, bend the knees to fold. Now whenever you feel pain in your low back, folding forward with bent knees is the way to go. Let's keep the knees bent, halfway lift, inhale. As you exhale, lead with the heart to fold. Come all the way up with a long spine, big breath in. And exhale, hands to the center of the chest. 
twice more. Reach up, inhale. As you exhale, bend the knees and fold to the ground. With knees bent, halfway lift. Inhale, collarbones up and exhale to fold. One more half salutation. Inhale up and exhale, hands to the heart. Reach all the way up, big breath in and bend the knees to fold. All right. Locate one of your blocks. Bring it underneath your left hand. Now go ahead, bend through your left knee. See if you can keep the right leg straight. And then slide your right hand to the back of your pelvis. Now I'm on my highest level because I want this to be less about what the arms are doing and more about letting the hips move. Now as you inhale, lift the chest forward. As you exhale, bend your left knee even more and then turn your ribs towards the right. Now the more you bend into your left knee, the more you're gonna let the left side of your pelvis swivel down. You certainly don't have to look up. You can look to the side. You can look to the ground. Let's take a breath in. As you exhale, start to release your left knee and fold. All right, let's go to side two. Bring your right hand to the block and make sure your feet are straight, toes forward, heels back. Slide your left hand to your sacrum and then bend through your left knee. Start to lift the chest forward and then begin to turn open. Again, the more that you bend through your right knee, the more you'll be able to turn the ribs up. Again, if it feels like you're cramping anywhere, back out and just move a little slower. Let's take another inhale. Exhale, release to your forward fold. Now you may want to have both of your blocks handy. Step your left foot back into a lunge and then drop your left knee down. Okay, now if this is tender for your knee, you can always bring a blanket or a pillow under the knee. And then use your blocks here on their highest level so you can just sink down and forward and make sure your right heel is under the knee, maybe even slightly in front of it. Now our purpose for being here is to release tension through the front of the left hip, area of the psoas, hip flexors, and we don't wanna force our way into it. Let's gently allow gravity to do its work. I feel that like the more I lift the chest up, the more my hips can sink. I'll just find a few rounds of breath. I really like ujjayi pranayam. I feel like that ujjayi breath is a way of just making the practice very meditative. You become very focused. Let's take another breath in. And as you exhale, we'll come back to our half splits. Now you can bring your hip over the knee or you can bring your hip to your heel. I'm gonna drop my blocks down a little bit and move them forward so I can just lay over the thigh. So now releasing tension from the back, the hip, your hamstrings, all three hamstrings which connect to your sit bone. Okay, we're just marinating here, just being really present for that release and just enjoying the sensations of release. Feel your right hip crease pull back. Outer left hip wraps forward. Let's take another breath in and stay for your exhale. And slowly come back to your lunge. Inhale, your left knee lifts up. 
and then spin your left heel flat. We're coming into warrior two. And you might have a block on the outside of your right foot. Can these open hip <clears throat> warrior poses are great for opening up the pelvis to the front. Again, see if you can let your pelvis, see how the thighs spin forward, let your hips move the pelvis. And then feel your ribs just gently spin towards the left. So we're not forcing the hips to square. Notice how much tension that creates in the fronts of the hips, compression through the low back. Again, let the pelvis turn. Feel that as you bend into the front knee, you're digging through the right heel to turn on the hamstrings. As you inhale, extend your front leg, turn your left toes up slightly, reach forward, 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 work your right hip crease back at as long as you can in your right side body. See if you can keep this length as you bring your arms to 12 and six. And what I like about using the block here again is we don't have to worry so much about what the arm and shoulder is about, and we can really focus on creating maximum release through your lower left side. And you can always drop your block down a little more to get more sensation, but just keep in mind that's gonna create more work for your hamstrings. So if your hamstrings are tight, I'd stay up on your highest level. If you want a little bit more release, you can stretch your left arm forward. And imagine I were pulling your left arm forward, and at the same time, you're fighting me and moving your left hip back. Let's take one more breath cycle. Feel both feet on the ground. Soften gently your standing knee. Come all the way up, arms by your ears. Grab a hold of your right wrist. Reverse triangle. And then lengthen your tailbone towards the ground. Feel that you're not collapsing into your left side body. Rather, you're creating length through the left side. Full deep breaths. Let's take an inhale here. As you exhale, hands to the ground or blocks, pop your back heel up, and then straighten both of your legs. So you can do this pyramid pose. You could hop the left foot forward, parsvottanasana, whatever is gonna give you the kind of sensation that you want. And then you can lift up if you want the ball of your right foot to get into your calves a little bit more. And if you can, try walking your blocks forward so you can press into them and feel in particular your right hip is drawing up and back. Neck is coming out of the shoulders. Let's take a big breath in. And then as you exhale, re-bend the front knee. As you inhale, walk your right foot to the right. And as you exhale, drop the left knee down. So I like to pause in the blocks. Just lift the chest up. Let's take an inhale here. And as you exhale, imagine you're coming into cat pose, tucking around. Inhale, re-bend, wide runner's lunge. And exhale, press away. Let's do two more. Again, if you need some support underneath your left knee, use a pillow or a blanket. Let's come back into your lunge. You can stay up. You can come down to your forms. You can use blocks for that. You can feel that your right heel is at least under the knee or slightly in front of it. If you want here, you can reach the right arm up and back. 
you can find a little quad stretch. Sometimes I like to shift my grip to the inner edge of the left foot so I can pull the heel in even tighter. Let's take a big breath in. As you exhale, release your back foot. Go ahead, move your blocks aside. Inhale your back knee up. Exhale your right foot to tabletop. Inhale your left, both knees now. Don't know why I was just going to say one knee. Both knees down and exhale lower to the earth. Now reach your right toes up and back. Reach your left toes up and back. And if your spine is tight, you might walk the arms forward or the palms forward a bit. And just start to find a few rolling cobras. And you might spend a breath or two at the top. Sometimes I like to find a little wiggle side to side. This feels really nice to really slow back. And any variations you want. And bring your palms by your chest line. Press up into a tabletop. And then lift your hips up for another short down dog. So usually we do down dog. This would be our distance from hands to feet and plank. But see if you can walk your feet in a little bit closer and then bring your feet to the outer edges of the mat. Spread the fingers wide, press the palms down and forward, and then bump your hips towards the right. And over towards the right, or opposite direction. And so one more time over towards the left. And over towards the right. Let's come back to center and just walk yourself towards the top of your space. Grab a hold of your blocks, find a halfway lift here, and then step your right toes back and drop the right knee down. Left heel is under the knee or slightly in front of it. And just use this time to let the weight of your hips drop. And I feel that the more you can even slide the weights or the blocks back, the more you lift your chest, the more you might find the hips drop. And then we'll extend the front leg, half splits. Again, you can go right hip over the knee or you can go back to heel. Feel your left sitting bone draw back in line with the right and you'll feel your outer right hip wrap forward. Feel that as the collarbones lift, the shoulder blades draw down and your neck gets longer. Let's take another breath in and out. Inhale to your lunge, lift the back knee up. Exhale, spin the right heel down for warrior two. Again, you might have a block on the outside of your left foot. Let's fix my pants here. It's the never ending search for pants that don't roll down. Am I right, ladies? Okay. Just heel to heel or heel to arch and 
If you're not feeling something in your inner thighs, you might even lengthen your stance. And just feel that as you move the front knee forward, it's challenging to get the knee over the ankle, but it's doable. And it's not affecting your back foot. You're not lifting the outer right arch. You're not hyperextending the back right knee. You inhale, extend the front leg. Turn your right toes up slightly and then pop your right heel back, your right hip back. Reach forward as far as you can. Reach, 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 reach. And bring your arms to 12 and six. Press down through both feet. See if you can work to straighten both legs. Again, without hyperextending, in particular, that front knee. Option to reach your right arm forward. Really move your hips back. Again, you can drop the block down a level for more sensation. You can let the head go if there's any tension in the neck. Imagine I'm pulling your right arm forward as you're moving your right hip back and work the right shoulder out of the ear. Keep a soft bend through your front knee. Reverse triangle. Straighten both legs, reach the arms up. Capture your left wrist, tailbone to the earth, and then just slow motion, reach the left arm up and back. Reach, reach, reach. Keep pulling your low belly and pubic bone to navel. Last breath. Exhale, hands to the blocks. Pop your back heel up. And extend both legs here, pyramid pose. Anchor your left big toe mound down. Again, you can walk the blocks forward if you want a little bit more. And if you did on the first side, you can pick up the ball of your left foot and just open up through the calf. See if you can allow your outer right hip to spin forward. Last breath in, and exhale, bend the front knee. Drop your left or right knee down, and walk your left foot to the left. And we'll keep a hold of the blocks. Sink down and forward. Take a breath in for cow pose. And as you exhale, tuck and round as if you're in coming into cat. Let's do it again. Full big breath. And exhale. Once more like that. And sink down. You can stay on the palms. You might come down to your forearms. Option to reach your left arm up and back and grab the back foot. Oh, hello, hamstrings. And you might grab the inner edge of the foot so you can bring the heel closer towards the hip. Let's take another breath. And as you exhale, carefully release your back foot if you have it. Come up to the palms, ditch your blocks, and step back to plank. Inhale your knees down, shift forward as you exhale lower to the earth. Reach your right toes up and back, and reach your left toes up and back. Slowly rise up to your cobra, 
and exhale to lower. Let's go ahead, press through tabletop. Bring your bolster with you, bring your knees wide, and then pull your bolster so close that you're able to support your low belly, um, your belly, your chest, and your head. And we'll just drop one ear down to begin. And if you're using pillows, you can stack pillows. I find the more support I have under my chest, the more I can just let the hips relax and release. And if you have your head dropping to one direction, turn it to the other side. And start to come through center, press your bolster away, but keep it nearby and start to make your way into a seat right onto your left hip. Have your bolster right up towards your left hip. Again, if you're using pillows, they'll be the long way. I like more support, so if you can stack pillows, that's great. And have your left knee up in line with the left hip. And we'll come down with cactus arms. You can either bring your left ear down, or if you want more, you can bring your right ear down. If you want to have extra support under your head, maybe a blanket or something, you can use that. And just feel the whole chest drop down. The whole torso release, relax the hips. Let's take a fuller breath in and let it go. As you inhale, slide your palms back. And as you exhale, press back up. And we'll just move really gently to the second side, onto the right hip. Again, right knee is up in line with the hip. You can do whatever you want with the top leg. And you can come down with your right ear. Or if you want more, you can bring your left ear down. And really just adjust your legs, in particular your top leg, in any way so that it feels like you can let both legs be heavy, so you can relax the hips. Let's take a deeper breath in and surrender to the exhale. As you inhale, slide the palms back. And as you pre exhale, press up. And we'll keep the bolster as it is. Spin yourself to center. Bring it sacrum up towards the bolster. And then just begin 
to lay back. And as I lay back, I like to find just a little tuck through the tail and then settle in. You can shimmy the shoulder blades together. Really let your feet fall apart. Another option here would be to bring your feet to touch, knees open wide, and you can bring blocks under the knees if you need. You can bring a blanket under the head. Allow the eyes to close. And just begin to observe the natural rhythm of your breath. Each exhale, allow yourself to become heavier and heavier. I invite you to stay here as long as you would like. Thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste.